And okay, let's uh, go ahead and get going. Welcome aboard, everybody. We got a podcast, the first ever edition of our Santa Barbara Astronomical Units podcast of the week. Members of the South Coast Longtime Telescope and Astronomy Club, the Santa Barbara Astronomical Unit, are going to stage every Monday morning's 11 a.m. get together on Zoom. So stand by, folks, for a full hour of cutting edge space developments, new scientific discoveries and launches, some astrophysics and SBAU club news. My name is Baron Ron Heron, and I gladly and proudly hosted a similar radio program like this for many years on the second and fourth Mondays of the month. And this podcast will emanate, I guess, on YouTube, as well as possibly on our SBAU website, sbau.corb. Uh, .org, excuse me. Now let's meet the gang, ladies and gentlemen, on the screen. President Jerry Wilson. Amazingly enough, Jerry, uh, over 100 years ago, we had another pandemic and we had a president named Wilson. I just noted that. <laughs> uh, we also have our outreach coordinator, Chuck McPartland. How are you, Chuck? Who is not, who's doing announcements, but not a lot of outreaching. <laughs> and webmaster Tom Totten, and I'm going to have to get rid of the meeting is being recorded blocks on my screen. Can I do that just by pressing continue without yes. disconnecting, you suppose? Yeah. So sure. I can see you. Here we go. Okay, it's gone. And Tom is gone. What the heck happened to him? It says oh, Astro Tom. Zoom. Oh, he's become strange looking. Is he green and covered with yellow and light green yep. on your, your pictures? Yep. So really? look. This we've got a lot to talk about this first edition, and we got a whole hour, 11 till noon on every Monday. And Tom, you want to tell us real quickly about our uh, web uh, conditions and what's going on, the site to go to to hear this? Program? Sure, right. It, we want to remind people to check out uh, www.sbau.org .org, to see our main website. And then from there, you can kind of click on the, the main picture, and, and you'll go to all these Zoom recordings there. So there's a link right on that front page to go to the, the recordings of these Zoom programs. Okay. And it also includes our telescope workshops on Tuesday nights and probably some other, hopefully we'll do some meetings and maybe even our board meetings will get back going on Zoom. We'll see how that works out. Okay, well, as we did on the radio for so many years there, our President Wilson has sent us a bunch of talking points, downloading, I guess, off one of your periodicals, either astronomy or sky and telescope. I I uh, sky. base it on a discussion in Astronomy Magazine, and then I rewrite it for the West Coast and uh, put in some things and take out other things to it, but it's basically from them. I see down at the bottom where I had the uh, asteroid um, oh. come by the Earth that I, I go through and I change things from Eastern Standard Time to Pacific Standard Time, but some of them are local time, but they still say Eastern Standard Time. So I took three hours off of it, and it says that the asteroid's going by at 1.45 when it should be going by at 4.45. Well, so for example, when that, when that it's asteroid not, makes a near pass, that's, we're going to be on daylight saving time again, aren't we? Yes. Yes. But that 4.45, I mean, it's only 12 degrees up, and it's magnitude 12, so I think it's going to be pretty tough for anybody to catch. But I have the RA and deck that we can give if people want to try yeah, that's a, and good job. That's a, that's a, um, a difficult observational target in March. But the main point of it is that it talks about um, what we're doing to avoid a catastrophic landing of one of these asteroids on Earth. So it's more of here's one, here's another one that goes by, but don't worry about it. But if you can see it, if you have an eight inch or more, because it is going to be what, 12th magnitude or 13th magnitude? Yeah, 12, well, 12.03 uh, to 12.15 before Don wipes it out. Yeah. So you get about an hour of maybe getting a shot at it. Okay. Well, just, just to clarify, it's due to pass by the Earth in about three weeks on the 21st. Yeah. And, and it has one of those long phone numbers instead of a name. Neil Grass, DeGrasse Tyson talks about phone number. Uh, here it comes. Tom is throwing it on the screen. <laughs> Whoa. And it's going to be about four times the distance of the moon? Uh, five this? times, yeah. Five times. Uh, a million and a quarter miles. And we're and about a quarter million miles from the, earth, from the moon to the Earth. 
And how big is it? How thick? How much diameter? You recall, Chuck, it's about a mile, I think. It's, yeah, no, it's I, about a, kilo, a kilometer in diameter. Okay. So well, you that would, a mile. Okay. So they, they fully expect it to pass us on the 21st of March, we hope. Yeah, oh, no, absolutely. Getting some uh, interesting looking uh, space look here at the orbits of our solar system. Mm -hmm. So we can talk about that. Obviously, we'll talk about Perseverance's landing a week and a half ago on Mars, as well as some of the other landings in one orbiter. I guess uh, three space companies on the Earth went to Mars, didn't they, with its recent pass? Yeah, the um, United, Ep Air United Arab Emirates, yep. uh, China, and uh, us. The, uh, but let's start China, with a full moon this week. Okay. So because those, every are, those are things to come. The, well, as an imager, this is the um, downtime for me because the full moon was full last Saturday. And so it's shedding a lot of light, making the sky real bright. Um, hmm. Is it fair to say that you gentlemen don't prefer a full moon to a crescent? Um, yeah, full for moon is new. They're all fine, but yeah, go ahead, Chuck. I was just gonna say full moon is new moon. So not only is it really bright and wiping out the rest of the sky, but it's flat, you don't see shadows. So you see much more interesting 3D effects when you're at the partial phases than at full. Okay. And therefore, this is gonna be rotten for viewing in the next few days as it starts to yeah. shrink into the waning phase. Well, the moon itself is about the easiest object to look at right now. And, and um, Tom's got a photo of the new, or the full moon up there. And you can see the major features are the dark maria and the rays from the craters. Um, and but a lot of the detail, detail is in the other phases is due to the shadows. And so that's all gone, of course. You said this was, uh, you sent a, a note saying this is the snow moon. Why is yeah. that? They, Chuck, you know the lore of that. Yeah, the, there's usually, you know, on, on average, one full moon a month. And so people used to, especially Native American tribes, would give them names like snow moon, hunger moon, wolf moon, worm moon, things like that, depending on what was going on around them, what season it was. And so it's, it's no particular significance, cultural thing that people had names for these various full moons. Well, I always understood from growing up that the moon is 240,000 miles away, but it varies, doesn't it? it is it's on its nadir, it's in its closest uh, relationship to the Earth right now. It's in closer, in other words. Perigee is when it's close, yeah. yeah. But it's not near perigee, oh, perigee. Full necessarily. I got gotcha. you. Yeah, nadir, nadir is the point on the Earth right below something. Oh, I see. Between two centers. Got to see. That's why I'm the weak link here. But <laughs> how does it range? What's the closest? in mileage and how's the farthest away it's sort of an elliptical instead of a circular orbit isn't it it's pretty close to circular but <clears throat> i don't yeah, recall like, the, i don't recall the differences yeah it's 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 small difference but it's like 235,000 to 242 or 43,000 you know in that neighborhood so that'll be a factor all this week but mars is also out there not is that correct yeah well, Mars is up there, and what's cool is it's right next to the Pleiades right now. Okay, is that a good thing? Well, it's 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 pretty. <laughs> it makes it easy to spot. Yeah. It, it's not part of the Pleiades. It's not in the middle of them, which in case no. you wouldn't be able to tell it was Mars. <laughs> oh, yes, you would. It's, it's quite red. Yeah. Oh, it is. It's also very small, though, right now, so it's not a good time, really, to look at it. Um, it was months ago. Well... Since uh, we just passed Mars's orbit, I, we overtook it uh, when we launched, as we were coming in, we launched Perseverance in and China and Arab Emirates also launched. I imagine, therefore, this is the time of year when we get that close where you could actually see Mars red, but can you not see it when it's on the other side of the sun and we're over here? I mean, Well, it is on the other side of the sun from us right now. Oh, it is. It's 137 million miles away. It's like 12 minutes by light travel time. So it is, you know, effectively on the other side of the sun from us. It's not directly opposite. 
we do two circulars of the sun when it does one. Yeah, Correct. roughly. Okay, so that's but it's been no matter where it is, it's always red. It's yeah. just brighter or dimmer. And we launched Perseverance back in what was it, July? July. July. And where was Mars in relation to us? Catching up was no, we were catching up with it, weren't we? Yeah. Okay. So within six months, obviously, we'd be on the other side of the sun. I got that. How about we the other two? We were actually on a path to ambush it. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't hear that. What did you say? We were on a path to ambush it. Oh, to ambush it. <laughs> How about the other two space companies? One is in the Middle East, and the other is China. China, I think, was about to settle down on the planet now or the last couple of days. No, they arrived in or they arrived in orbit, but they're not going to land their uh, rover for another month. Yeah. Oh, now ours didn't go into orbit. Ours just went straight into the atmosphere from deep space. Okay, but the United uh, the United Arab Emirates is orbiting Mars. Yeah, that's orbiting, yes. and it's only going to orbit Mars. And they're going to look into what the atmosphere from above. Yeah. They're going to image it and take pictures of the spectra and uh, look at the atmosphere. Well, were you guys all watching as I was a week and a half ago on Thursday the 18th, the whole thing? Yes, absolutely. Very dramatic. Uh, later on, they released, of all things, Tom, could you keep it down? We're trying to talk here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Anytime you want to jump in. Uh, I thought it was so amazing to see that that parachute deploy, just like on Earth. Yeah. And yet it's got 1% of our atmosphere up there. Yeah, well, when you really slow down very much. Oh, yeah, when you're it. going like Mach 5 relative to their atmosphere, it uh, it'll balloon your parish quick. So yeah, if that had happened here, it would have ripped a thousand miles an hour. Okay, gotcha. But it did work. It just sort of now, made it look like a real place. There's air there, but not a lot. Yeah. <laughs> I don't I don't know if you noticed, but there was a pattern on the parachute that looked like a universal product code. You know, there were these bars and things that were kind of red colored. And that was yeah. actually a coded message that they put on the parachute for people. But then it turns out that it encodes dare great things. Dare great things. You know, I saw that on the entrance to JPL. A lady took us inside prior to the long, prior to the arrival. I was watching something on YouTube. And so if, if Tom will go to the picture I included in the talking points, of the uh, perseverance under its parachute uh, oh. descending into Jezero Crater is an uh, image there. Tom, uh, plus oh, we got oh. some great pictures from the planet from down below in the crater. Oh, Jezero is actually, actually, Jerry, what you're showing is a picture of where it landed on Mars. I don't see the parachute. See the square? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I see what you're saying. Is it taken from the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter or whatever? Hold yeah. on for a second. Let's see if I can get there. The orbiter looking down. It's a it's a an orbiter that was put up in 2006. Oh. And it's there for all the Mars missions. Um, and uh, the uh, it translates. It sent. It takes pictures of things. Of course, Mars. That's what it means. Reconnaissance orbiter. It checks on the weather and the atmosphere, and it relays data from any spacecraft on the surface back to Earth. It's a re relay link. So are we looking down at Jezero Crater in this picture? Yes, you're looking down from the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter into Jezero Crater, and the square shows a blow up that shows the parachute and the per Perseverance rover on the way down to the to landing. Wow, how big is that crater? It's about 39, 40 miles across. Yeah. Okay. They said the size yeah, of Lake, Lake Tahoe. Yeah, oh. the size of Lake Tahoe. And they think it was a lake at one time. Yeah, it's got typical flow patterns and a nice delta coming in off of a river and stuff. So if there was ever a place for microscopic life or, you know, people who just wanted to go to the beach, this is the place to be. So they're going to look there for um, empty beer cans and stuff. Well, do we have, you guys know of the names of all the other uh, rovers over the years. There's been opportunity. There was Spirit. Some of them are still going. Some are the dead. First, but first one was Sojourner. Sojourner. And then there was um, 
and spirit and opportunity. That's right. Thank you. And were they and curiosity and then this? Were they? Uh, did they all land in craters or planes or none of them landed on a mountain? As far as I know, that's too much that's of a cool. chance, isn't it? Yeah. Like Mons is that this what they call? This one has a, a painting on it of that's like the a decal you see in the rear window of a father and a mother and a bunch of little kids. This one has a silhouette of each of, of the four preceding rovers and this one. Really? Yeah. How do you see that? It's a, a it shows in a picture that someone took of the spacecraft taking a picture of itself, and you can see that little painting mimicking the decal. Huh. They, have, they have a bumper sticker. Yeah, a bumper <laughs> sticker. <laughs> it's I've not like that. it's not like what uh, uh, Carl Sagan put the record on the side of Voyager. There it is. There it is. Uh, Tom yeah. got it up now. Oh, there it is. I'll be darned. That's on the spacecraft. So well, the Sojourner. The one on the left is Sojourner. And then China. Orbit, or was it, this is, uh, what, is, what were these? Spirit and Opportunity. And Curiosity. Curiosity. Which ones are still working? Just the last two. Are still rolling around and everything. One of them yeah. lost its power when they got dusty dust all over the uh, solar panels until a dust devil hit it. I heard. Yeah, it, it went up. Yeah, they both experienced uh, unanticipated cleaning, but one yeah. of them was going up a hill when it became dark, and when the and so its battery didn't survive the night. But its solar panels were not placed right to get enough sun to recharge the battery, so it stuck there. And another one, I think, lost one of its wheels and got stuck in the sand or something like that. Oh, for crying out loud. Do you and remember, Chuck? Uh, uh, Spirit uh, is the one that got stuck in the sand at an angle where it couldn't recharge the batteries. Okay. And then Opportunity uh, was caught by a storm, the big dust storm, and they, you know, it, the panels were so covered that it couldn't replenish, but the storm lasted so long that the batteries just died. Yeah, okay. Really? Well, this this one, Perseverance, is probably the size of a car, I guess, the biggest, and it's going to be drilling for samples that will be picked up later, I understand. Yeah. Yeah. How in the world do they have a date for that pickup, that launch? No, that hasn't really been planned definitively yet, just the notion. Okay. Is, you see on the pictures, on the silhouettes of the Perseverance and Curiosity, there's a, a box sticking up at an angle like a tail. That's the that's the power source. Those don't run off of solar panels. Oh. Those run off of a, a radioisotope uh, nuclear reactor, so to speak. I thought and then they, they were... had the mass cam sticking up that Tom was showing there. Yeah. So they're not reluctant to launch stuff with the nuclear uh, radiation hazards uh, if it's over the Atlantic, right? No, uh, not this type of stuff. Right. One time I that heard goes they back did. To the Voyager spacecraft too. Yeah. Now, when are they going to fire up the helicopters? Anybody know? About a month or two, I think. Yeah, they're they're waiting on that. What's its name? Oh, Ingenuity. Name, I think. Ingenuity. Yeah, that's it, Tom. What is it? Ingenuity. Ingenuity. And it's got cameras that is going to show it just like a drone on the Earth, isn't it? Yeah. It's got a black and white and a color. And so it this is not just single pictures anymore being relayed to us. It'll be a streaming video somehow across space. Uh, I don't know about that. They may collect short videos. Oh, I see. The issue is not really the cameras on the rover. It's the data rate you can send it back to Earth. You know, whether it's worth to try and send a long uh, feature length film or not. Is it short-lived? Is, is ingenuity going to only last a Martian day or so and then die? 30 days. 30? Yes. So, I and, think that's our time. Yeah, that's, that's the uh, contract lifetime. Um, but the contract lifetime on the first two rovers was um, only 90 days, and they, were, they lasted for uh, half a decade each. Well, does Ingenuity, the helicopter, have its own little solar panels? How does it, yeah, it does. keep power yeah. for a month, a whole 30 days? Yeah. It has solar panels and, and batteries. Oh, it does? It only has battery power for like a one-minute flight or something. Okay. 
Hey, Martian the rest day of is seems to keep it warm. Yeah. <laughs> a day on Mars is what slightly longer than a day on Earth? It's like 43 minutes longer, something like that. Yeah, 43. Close enough. Okay. Uh, so it has about 12 hours of sun and 12 hours of darkness. Yeah. Yeah. It, and we lose total contact with these rovers when it's on the when it's turned away from no. us, right? No, because they can talk to the orbiters. Oh, how many orbiters do we have on Mars? Just one? No, there's a lot. We have, we have one operating that I know of. Yeah, that, there's one of the pictures that came back is also from a European space agency orbiter, ExoMars. Yeah. And there's a Russian one, I think. You know, there's several that can relay. Yeah. Okay, and the United Arab Republic, they're just going to have theirs up there for a short time, or is it going to be there forever? Or? Oh, it's for years. For years? Ch China is going to land their own rover, aren't they? What's yeah. Tian, Tianmen or something like that it's called, right? Tianmen 1? Yeah, it means uh, heavenly questions, I think. And is anywhere near one of ours, or is that planet so big there's plenty of space? And plenty of space. <laughs> what are they going to try to find that we're not finding? They're going to look for the same kind of stuff. Yeah. Really? We, we have not exhausted all the uh, things there are to explore on the planet yet. Plus, we, even if we, we have the same set of instruments, you're at a new place. So. Yeah. But the benefit of folks that might not know, uh, the two uh, contrasting, um, what are they, rotors? The rotor blades, one goes counterclockwise. Counter -counter rotating, yeah. And that, that way it doesn't spin around on the bottom as well as the top. And Correct. there's very little atmosphere there. So it really has to go like a son of a gun, doesn't it? Yes. Thousands and they're of four RPM. feet long. Huh? The rotors are four feet across and the thing is only like 19 inches high. So it's big rotors. And that little bag at the center point of those four legs has got everything it needs in it. It's got cameras and transmitters and yeah, that's that's the instrument box, and that's that's insulation there to keep it warm. Oh, is that what it is? It looks like a bag, and so it'll land. It has to back off. The uh, so a perseverance has to move back and leave it there. It's is it underneath the device now? The rover. Just yeah, goes? here's an image of that. Oh, okay, there it is. It will take it out. The, the uh, helicopter was made by IKEA, so there is some assembly involved no just joking <laughs> <laughs> but it landed on mars with the helicopter on its underside yes yes, yes. it's folded up under the underneath the um, rover you know what i don't understand about perseverance maybe you guys can figure it out this rocket thing that comes in holding it at the very last part is yeah, sky got, crane yeah the screen the sky crane has several I, they say bungee cords. I'm not sure. Long no, uh, cord. How how is that disconnected at the bottom? Does you have any idea physically? As it's not explosive bolts. I don't think. I don't know. I, I hear when in the animations I see, I hear pops like it was an explosive bolt, but I have no oh. idea what it was. Hmm. Well, that's how uh, Care D'Elia got out of the little pot on uh, the Jupiter mission in 2001. <laughs> A careful explosive bolts. I'll never forget that on the back of that little thing. Yeah. So we're watching Perseverance. And uh, do you suppose China will let us see their landing? I'm sure they will. Really? Well, yeah. they don't have as much capability to view the actual landing, but they will send pictures of the from the site when they do land. Yeah. They're trying to make a name for themselves, so they're not going to do it in secret. Is my view. Yeah. Oh. Okay. This is the journey outside well, of our only, orbit. Only if they're it? successful. Only if they're successful, then they'll show you the pictures. Yeah. yeah. Well, that was that was the Soviet Union's way. Oh. I'm not sure. See, Russia's What's or China has been telling their plans. If you dig it up on the internet. You know, they've got big plans for, we're about to, we just signed a contract. NASA signed a contract with um, Elon Musk's SpaceX to put up the Lunar Gateway, which is a, a, right. a, a space station that's permanently orbiting the moon. And it will be a way station for uh, trips to Mars for people and for a landing on the moon for people. 
and China has announced a similar thing. Yeah. So it's okay. It's they got an orbiter up there. The Don't they have an orbiter around the moon now? We yes. have a, an orbiter around the moon. Yes, we do. Um, the, the 1994, the Air Force launched one called Clementine. And that's the one that went around and decided from, um, I think it was radar information, that there was ice at the South Polar Cap on the moon. Mm. So that was, um, and ever since then, people have been looking in there and confirming that that was the case. Really? And China has an orbiter that they used to talk to their lander that was on the other side of the moon. Yeah, that's correct. Oh, they got a lander on the dark side. They landed on the, far on the side. side of the moon. The dark side, uh, it's, it's, it's not a sharp dark light, side, Ron. but we it's never see it, side. do we? Huh? It's not it's, a dark side, it's the far side. Yeah, it's the far side. Far it's side, dark, not dark side. Up. Just like the cartoons. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. But we, the, uh, we've seen pictures of it. It seems to be far more cratered than the side we see. There's more Maris or Mares well, no, or whatever. There's no things. seas. There's no Maria. There's no big black spots. Yeah, very few. And they're yeah. smaller. Yeah, that's true. We don't know why that is? Yeah. Yeah. Those are those. Um, the moon was hit by a number of large um, asteroids, relatively large. And the crust was punctured or liquefied by the impact. And so we had a big lava flow and the um, asteroids are buried under there um, it, as a mass con, they call them. And so it makes this side of the moon heavier. And that's why it faces us in locked. It's not, it gives it a non-spherically symmetric mass distribution on the moon. So Tranquility Mare is nothing more than a giant crater then. Yes. yes it's, a, it's a really big one. And it produced either either it accessed a reservoir of magma or it produced the magma. I haven't read which one is the current theory. Well, there there's two different versions of the moon. We saw the other side. And that's where we tend to want to land, isn't it? On those big flat plains areas or whatever, Maris. That's where most of the landings were. There was one highland area landing near the end, 16 or 17. Hmm. The uh the in, we're going to be landing or uh, trying to call on, trying to build a station, and so is Russia, and so is China, at the South Pole. Because of the water. Yeah, because of the water, and because the the fact that for solar panels, uh, you can always have the top of the ridge in sunlight, and down in the shadows you have it perpetually dark. So it's uh, that's where the water is frozen. Is there a, a, a depiction anywhere of this moon that we're looking right now at the screen showing exactly where all the Apollo landers might be? Yeah, you can look that up. The map is available online. I can call but, one up if you want to see one. Sure. Can you? Yeah, let me uh, see. But you can't see any of them from Earth. You can just have the moon there and you can put a point or yeah. flag where each one landed. This will take me a I second. I understand that. But uh, right. they're not, they're all on the side facing us, right? Yeah. All yeah. from 11 through 17, there were, what, six? six? So. Yeah, six of them. I know, oh, no, 13 never landed. Oh, that's right, 13. But, had a little but there were six landings. Okay, let me, let me do share screen here. Because I've never seen this. Never see, I have no idea. I know Tranquility, obviously, is the biggest of the Maris. Look at that. Yeah, that shows the uh, Chinese ones and the uh, Russian ones, the Luna. My God, we're all over the place. And and some of them were, you know, unmanned. Oh. Yeah. I mean, every everyone but ours uh, are Apollos. Okay. Some of them crashed in violently, didn't they? Yes. The surveyors. And oh, there were rangers. They're... Rangers really crashed. We yeah, had... they were intended to. Yeah. Oh, it was? And they, the video showed it coming in, and then the last minute it just goes dark. Yep. Whoa. You see yeah. over on the side with Ranger 8 and Apollo? Ranger uh, 8 and Apollo and Surveyor were all right there in the Sea of Tranquility. And the Apollo 11 astronauts actually went to the Surveyor and detached a camera and brought it back. Yeah. They cut off some cables and brought them back. And it was 
partially to find out because no one had any real data on how things behave uh, under constant proton bombardment from the sun and in a vacuum. So they wanted to look at all the materials they'd chosen for insulators and stuff and seeing how well they worked. And a lot of the insulators on the cables didn't work well. They had basically become uh, sensitive to touch. They just crumbled to powder. So they knew what materials not to use again. There have been a number of missions that are just technology demonstrations like that in low Earth orbit where they'll put up a satellite with all sorts of different materials on it. And then they'll either um, go up and sample it or have instruments to monitor it. And the um, current rover on the moon is half scientific mission and half engineering missions, testing different things like the new version of artificial intelligence that helped this one pick its own landing site. Much you mean the Mars? Quick. You mean the Mars rover? Mars rover. Excuse yeah. me. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yes, I said surveyor, but I meant uh, Percy. Oh, isn't there also a, a bank of mirrors stuck on the moon that takes laser light and throws it back as it? Yeah, it? quarter cubes. All of the Apollo sites have uh, corner reflectors on, on the instrument packages they, they left. Oh. And the Russian- well, I was watching on a YouTube video. I didn't see the whole thing, but I watched uh, an hour and a half, started to watch the hour and a half uh, Apollo 12 mission. And shortly after they landed, and climb down the limb, uh, the guy says, oh, look, there it is over there on the ridge. They saw something. Do you know what I'm talking about? You mean oh. on Mars? Uh, no, on the moon. This would be Apollo 12, trying to remember who it was. I don't recall that. OK, well, I'll have now to you send you started a link. Whole, you started a whole new church of, of, uh, of uh, conspiracy theories here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And look at all those seas, those mares, uh, only on the side facing us. That's crazy. Yeah. The other side is just looks like my lower leg, which has problems and has for years, but that's all right. Back to perseverance. It's going to be in, in uh, use for years, is it not, gentlemen? Hopefully, yes. Okay. And then w w the Chinese one, do you know the date it's coming down? No. Well, is it before the asteroid passes us? I know that's three weeks from today. Probably not. I, I, it, it was a month from their landing. Was okay. The plan. I wonder why they're taking so long. They just want to orbit like the uh, Arabs? No, they probably put a lot of self-test instruments on there, and they're making sure that all the voltage value and readings are in the right range. And they might also be, you know, they might have alternate sites and they're taking uh, data on the roughness and making they right. pick new sites. Are we going to share all this stuff on the planet Earth, the Arabs, with the Chinese, with the Indians, with the Europeans? Do yeah, we share everything? General. Yeah. Unless someone finds an actual alien spacecraft, yes. <laughs> everything will be shared. And well, we're the, the most United open. Arab, the United Arab yeah. Emirates spacecraft, a lot of the components... Are, are from the U.S. and and I think there's a European Space Agency instrument on board, so it's not yeah. like they're the only ones that were working on it. Yeah, they collaborated with Lawrence Livermore Lab and the University of Colorado, and somewhere from India, did you say? I think right. I I don't know about India. I think India has, but but they may have because India has their own orbiter too. Yeah, yeah. No, they collaborated with Lawrence. And so they were launched. Primary... From, where did they launch from? Don't know. Uh, Shinkang, well, it's it, Sink. I'm going to pronounce it wrong, but Shinkang or whatever, they, they're out in their desert there, their Gobi Desert launch site. Well, that I was think. China, but what about United Arab Emirates? Oh, they, I think they launched from Japan. Oh. Okay. Okay. So my image of all these people in the control room wearing long robes and headdresses. Oh, you is, saw that, huh? Well, no, I didn't see that. I'm wondering, you know, in an Arab country where they all wear, I don't know what those things yeah, are that's called. that's exactly what it looked like. They were all wearing white, you know. Were they? Whatever that's... the men wear. Well, that's probably cool. They probably know something out in the hot desert that we don't. <laughs> they looked appropriately happy when it went, when it went into orbit. Aha. Uh -huh. See, there's there's uh, the head guy. Oh, I, there it is. I was right. I was making a joke. That's Arabic on the screen, and there's the Earth behind it. 
Tom's doing a great job of graphics here. Uh huh. Adding to even if we don't have musical themes for the open or breaks like I'm the radio. To, I'm still willing to sing. <laughs> Well, now, what are we going to be looking at on our scopes this week, uh, if anything, besides the moon? Moon's going to be pretty bright for a couple more nights for, from, for me, um, but about two nights. If the weather stays clear, I think we're supposed to get a storm on Wednesday and Thursday. And then into Saturday. Saturday. What's that? And into Saturday. Okay. Chance of rain. Let's hope. Oh no, Pat's giving a thumb down. She's looking at the weather. Uh -oh. <laughs> all our all our rain chances go away. Yeah, I heard that we might have some by Saturday. Yeah. So I'm I, I've got several asteroids I'm... to try, and tonight Tom is going to help. We're going to do a, a Zoom star <laughs> party for a Ventura school. Yeah. So we'll see how that goes. Oh, online. So, yeah. so how does this look to you guys? This is Stellarium. How can you see the artwork of the constellations there? Not no, yet. Sure. We're not seeing it. Got to put it on the screen, not Tom. But not, I'm not sharing that yet. Oh, hold on. I didn't guess I didn't hit the share button yet. Hold on. There we go. Looks great. You can see uh, Leo the lion and Cancer the crab. It's far. It's too small to read. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's awful crowded. You might want to cut down on how many things have uh, have labels. Just so uh, uh, maybe doesn't it have a yeah. more naturalistic sky view? A naturalistic? Yeah, I, I mean, mean with the well, of course we don't have any Milky Way right now, but yeah, I can take down the number of labels. Yeah, if it's the awful. weather's good, if the weather's good, this is the perfect time to uh, look at galaxies and galaxy clusters. Uh, yeah, late at night when the moon is new. Yeah, but those are the major stars in those constellations. Just we can't yeah. read them. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's like the interior of the planetarium at the Museum of Natural History. Well, the artwork is different. Yeah, I think I yeah that's true. The DMs. <laughs> yeah, can you get rid of the uh, grid? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, you got to have a grid. There we go. Yeah. So I that's, think that, that that's the kids will. Okay. You know, that, that's more naturalistic look for the kids looking out at their sky. Yeah. They might be doing this outdoors. There's Weird. Mars next to the Pleiades. Where yeah. would Mars be? Mars is right in the middle of the screen. Right near where that yellow line goes across. Oh, that's Mars. So it's to the lower left. Yeah. 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 That, yellow, that yellow line is the ecliptic. Okay. Oh, the so solar ecliptic. No, it so wouldn't be the see. solar ecliptic, would it? It's yeah. the ecliptic, yeah. and that's the summer part of the ecliptic. Oh, I see. And it's on the other side of the sun, as you told me. And we're going to catch up to it again, are we not? Every two years. Uh, well, yeah. More like three, because it, it's it's going. It's not a nice integer ratio, but yeah. Yeah. Huh. Is it pretty much uh, standard? Mercury goes around, what, in about? A third of our year? 88 days. 88 days, OK. That's about a third, and that's 90 days. That's, that's a third shorter, shorter, closer you get. OK. And, and one of the things I wanted to bring up during this hour, if I had a chance, was the Lagrange uh, point, LaGrange. where we're going to launch, I think, in late October, we're going to launch the web. Hopefully. We hope. We hope. This is about the 20th launch date. Yeah. The what? I didn't hear you. This is about the 20th launch date. Oh, so it may still be moved back. Well, they got to make sure it's perfect because there's no way to go up and rescue it or fix it, is it? it that's true. So it's going through tests and it's going to be stationed on the radio. You've tried to explain to me, maybe Mr. Tom Totten can come up with some kind of graphics that'll show me what this Lagrange point is, named for some physicist. Who, and it makes sense to me. There's a point between the Earth and the Sun where you don't have to orbit. You get equal gravity from each body. And it's uh, supposedly, what, a, a million miles out? And that's where they're going to put the Webb telescope? Yep. About a million miles out on the opposite side of the Sun from us. On the opposite side of the Sun from us? Yeah, on the L2 point. That way yeah. they... 
they can keep it shaded. Opposite side of the uh, moon or the earth from us, or excuse me, from us, but L3 is on the uh, opposite side of the sun. Okay, well, see, you've lost me there. I can understand why equal gravity from earth might be, extend out to a million miles. Well, it's not, much, the equal what? gravity is not pulling in opposite directions, so there's no force on it. It's not like that. Some of them are stable and some of them are unstable. So the, it's like a pencil, you take a sharp pencil, you can balance it on the eraser and let go of it and it won't fall down. But you can also balance it on the point. But as soon as you let go, it'll start falling over. That's an unstable Lagrange point. And what it is is because things are equal, it takes a minimum amount of um, rocket fuel to stay on station. Huh. So, so to clarify, Ron, they're going to the one that's marked L2 here. Yeah, that's correct. Okay, wait a minute. Okay. But now the moon is going to come inside every so often, every 28 yeah. days, is it not? And screw it up? No. No, it's, it it, it, this isn't to scale, Ron. So they're a million miles out, and the moon's a quarter of a million miles out. So that's a minor effect. Yeah. Okay, but it stays out there and it does not orbit the Earth. It just stays in one place. Yeah. Sort of, yeah. The reason is because it's an infrared telescope and the sun is one mighty hot infrared source. So it wants to always be in the shadow of the earth. Right, and uh, along with a big tennis court sized shade that's supposed to uh, shade it from not only the sun, but uh, micro, not microwave, what an infrared radiation from both the earth and the moon. Yep. Yeah, I'm gonna be shaded from it. And then they're gonna, uh, I guess receive regular daily, just like the Hubble, uh, broadcasts from it or radiation, radio waves down of all the incredible pictures it's going to take in infrared. You think it takes, yeah, there will be mucho papers written about uh, what the uh, James Webb sees. But there's nothing out there in that Lagrange point now. I don't know that that's true. Yeah, those are popular spots. Yeah. Oh. Those, there's only one, isn't there? Well, no, there's, there's a bunch of them. You can see all of them labeled on that drawing, but right. L, L2 is popular. Huh. But this sucker is going to fold open because it can't obviously go up in a wide enough capsule to put like a big round 30 foot diameter glass. I guess they're made of glass mostly, right? Made the of beryllium. Glass. Beryllium. Yeah. Uh, different from optics because what is why does optics use glass but the radio telescopes only use metal what's the difference why um, why is there in space the optics are generally made of metal too beryllium no, the weather satellite jammy is an all beryllium spacecraft um and the optics were beryllium mirrors coated with nickel in this case it'll be beryllium mirrors coated with gold to optimize the infrared well, the, the lenses that were in the early telescopes had to have the light going through them. Yeah. These days, these days it's reflected back, so it doesn't have to necessarily be glass coated no. with metal. It can just be the metal, right? Yeah. Yeah. Some glass. Or the optics had. Okay. There's glass up there, um, and a lot of the glasses we use on Earth for optics and for the bases of filters, and for lenses, um, a lot of these are not radiation hard. And so in the environment of space, um, when they pass through radiation that's captured in the Earth's Van Allen belts, the glass will eventually turn black after about a year. You're kidding. You know, so they have to use um, um, radiation. They have to use special glasses that uh, stay transparent when they're bombarded with radiation. The whole glass darkens throughout? The whole glass, it turns black. If you took one of our store-bought telescopes that's very expensive here on Earth, um, like a Teleview NP-127, and you took it up in space, uh, it would only work for about a year. The glasses would um, darken. Okay, for my untrained eye, I'm seeing this uh, hexagonal shaped uh, maze, if you will, of hexagons with a big hole in the middle and I understand some of your mirrors and your telescopes that you use have holes in the middle. Why isn't there a hole in the picture you see? <laughs> the shot a of hole. the cosmos. What? If, 
if you defocus, you'll see a hole. Yeah. Oh. If you focus the hole, you can't see a hole. Oh, the focusing. Yeah. Okay, that's interesting. What would uh, screw this thing up if they launched it and, and it unfolded just slightly wrong in space? The, the temperature I affected it's, it? It's the, the, the last that. The last launch date was not met because when they unfolded their origami spacecraft shield, uh, it tore. And so I know they were reworking the system of how they unfolded that. Is it covered with gold? The mirror is. Well, there's 18 what, mirrors, aren't they? I don't know what the shields are covered with. The shield, that's like a big tarp, isn't it? Of yeah, those five, five tarps that are spread out there. They're like okay. Kapton and, and Mylar. Yeah, okay. And the mirror is coated with gold because you want to get, the, it, it reflects the nice IR wavelengths they want to look at. Wonder how much that gold is worth. It's got to be a thin film of it though, isn't it's it? It's really thin, yeah. Okay, it's like gilding. You know what gilding is? Yeah, yep. yeah. a very thin layer. <laughs> Have they tested it on Earth to actually see something in the distance? either from Earth into space or down here on the ground? Do you know? If, I'm sure they know it works, but I mean, have they gotten pictures that you can see online? Yeah. Uh, they wouldn't have done that out in the atmosphere. I mean, they might have done testing to see that they can focus things, but I'm sure they haven't done any real imaging. But it's usually just going to look distant into the cosmos, hundreds of millions of light years away rather than looking in on the moon's surface and actually trying to see a lander or, or on Mars. Absolutely. I mean, you don't see them using the Hubble for that. <laughs> okay, well, how many more years do they think the Hubble's going to last? Still hanging in there. It's kind of on its last legs. Yeah, it's been on its last legs for a while. Um, if Elon gets his starships going, those things will be capable of making a, a, a service um, trip to the Hubble. Oh, really? Yeah. What, so I, what I don't think that's a planned trip, but they are capable of doing it if we really want to um, do that. The Hubble was put up to get around atmospheric um, turbulence and get clear views without the atmosphere in the way. And since it was put up, um, large telescopes have developed um, adaptive optics so that they can unscramble a blurred, an atmospherically blurred image. So the, the Hubble telescope is only, I think it's 96 inches in diameter. And we have- 84, I think. What's that? 84. 84, thank you. And uh, we have telescopes on Earth that are way bigger than that. And now they can get a view that's clearer than what Hubble has. So there's not really a need for clarity and resolution to get a telescope in orbit anymore unless it's some very big dramatic thing, um, such as a balloon with the inside mirror coated. The, hub, the web is going up because it's a different wavelength and it's trying to get above the Earth's water content in the atmosphere, which absorbs infrared. So yeah. we, can't, we can't duplicate the web from Earth, but we can duplicate and exceed the Hubble from Earth. But why would the Hubble deteriorate at all if it's outside of that atmosphere it's there's no erosion well, to speak of that's true but there are micrometeorites that hit it all the time um, and what's what's failing on hubble is the gyroscopes that hold it steady yeah oh and moving parts mechanisms are the risk points for all spacecraft and to make when uh, when the new horizons went by pluto it was very impressive because they tried to make it because it's going to be cold so long on the trip out there, they made it so there's no um, no um, mechanisms on board. So to point the camera, you had to turn the whole spacecraft. Huh? They they run by gyroscopes. Aren't isn't there something about locking in on a star that makes a probe or a yeah. rocket yeah. stay on course? Yeah. Yeah, but the way the way you turn it to lock onto the star is with the gyroscopes. Tom, I don't know if you realize it, but you're still screen sharing, so we're seeing all your little oh, thumbnails and okay. things fly yeah. by here. Yeah, I realize it. I was I thought it might be interesting. It's kind of distracting. What do you got here? I think when you. <laughs> <laughs> well, it gives the people that tune in and watch us something to watch besides our ugly faces, I guess. 
<laughs> Too much information. All right. Well, we have 10 minutes left. Time for a commercial. <laughs> a two minute Six break. Identification. Yeah. Are you are you aware of did you see a launch that got scrubbed yesterday called Skylink? Starlink. Oh, Starlink. Yeah, that's some more of um, Elon Musk's 64,000 satellites he's launching up in the sky. Yeah, it was down to about a minute and then it aborted. Yeah. It said tune in tomorrow and I guess it's going to be low earth orbit satellites yeah. on a SpaceX 9. Mm -hmm. For Elon, you don't know much about that. Oh, really? That's really? an internet service that he's putting up 60,000 of these damn little satellites oh. so that people can get internet <laughs> service around the world and so that when they collide with each other, we can be locked out of space for a couple of hundred years. <laughs> so when we used to do outreach, um, Chuck would frequently have his phone set to beep when there was about to be an ISS overflight, something to look at. Right. Or an iridium yeah. flare. What's that? Or an iridium flare. Yeah, iridium flare. That's right. Now, if he had it set every time a satellite passed over from the Starlinks, it would be beeping all the time. Wow. So is, there not, is there not an endeavor or an entrepreneur that says someday there's going to be a service that goes up and cleans up all the space junk? There, there That's in works. Oh, it is, it's got to be cost ineffective as far as rocket fuel to be able to jury rig around you know to was put well, yourself they're trying, to, they're trying to make it cost effective oh they are tom you want to give us an update on uh, what's going on with your tuesday night program what have you been talking about uh, will you talk about it uh, get our telescope workshop yeah it's tuesday nights at 7 30 and i send out the meeting notification to all the members that was so, an image of the Starlink satellites there. Yeah, oh. going across. And I, let's see, the museum has a couple of things coming up. The Museum of Natural History I had listed there. I can't, one was about uh, climate uh, discussion and then the other one was about penguin. What was the thing about penguins, I think, coming up? So you can go to sbnature.org uh, to see what their events are at the Museum of Natural History, History, which is our sponsor. So we put a plug in for them. Right. Javier uh, went online with you, didn't he? Our connection. He's retired. But I saw his name listed as a participant in the Tuesday night workshop. Javier? Did he come online with you last Tuesday? Not not no. yet. I haven't seen Javier yet. Yeah. Oh, well, I saw his name tonight, on tonight. Tonight he's going to be participating with the, the school yeah. outreach that we're doing for Ventura Charter School, I, I believe. Javier showed up one time. He didn't. I don't remember, but I, I've been on and off. Yeah. Could I join in now that I know this incredible new technology? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. How, how, do you reach a point where it won't take anymore? You fill the screen with too many little pictures no, of people no, talking. Really. <laughs> I think we. I think there, there might be a limit of maybe a hundred or something with our account, or 150. I can't remember, but you, you think, I think you can show maybe a maximum of maybe 40 people at the same time. So you'd have to click through pictures if you wanted to see everybody. But you know, the max we've had online probably is like maybe 11 at one point to seeing pictures. I think maybe, maybe only 10. But imagine later in the year, everything's back to normal. We've all been vaccinated. I'm getting my shot on Thursday. Maybe you guys are too, I don't know. Wednesday. Imagine going back to normalcy uh, where people meet in that little house across the bridge and below next to our hall the broader be building. totally different what the broader building yeah I, well I think are you still going to continue what you do online here yeah i don't think all of these online accommodations that we've been making are going to disappear all of a sudden i'm yeah. i'm in favor of keeping the telescope workshop as a zoom meeting because we're not really allowed to set very much up in that room and leave it yeah, actually, the Zoom meetings have worked really well for that. Yeah, I think so, too. And it'll be a lot easier for people to, to ask for help with their telescopes, I think, too. Mm -hmm. Well, Tim, uh, Tim is Crawford. just in, what's his name? Tim Crawford. Crawford. Not like we're drinking buddies yet. He did send me a complimentary email, but he's in a world of his own when he, he pretty much runs the show. I got to tune in and find out what's going on. That's tomorrow night. Yeah. And, then, yeah. and then tonight we can join you for this event? 
Uh, this is a school event, so I, I, don't, I don't know how many people are going to have signing on. They're, they're anticipating 40 for the kids, so um, I guess you could if you want, but it's, it's mainly for the kids. Okay. Well, you've been turning a lot of people, I'm not saying turning them down, no, no place to do anything except something like this. Have you been invited over the hill into San Inez Valley for a couple of things you couldn't do because of problems? Parking. Uh, I've, I've been doing Zoom stuff for them. And um, we've gotten a lot of uh, requests to bring telescopes, for example, to um, the hotels. Oh. Um, but I've just had to say no. Uh, and we did get one for Midlands, uh, not Midland School, but uh, the family school up there by Michael Jackson's former ranch. Oh. And, ha and had to say no. Yeah, every. People are starting to request like the Girl Scouts and, and so on. And they're actually scheduling years in advance now. The, the Girl Scouts have scheduled for something like in two years. So oh. um, at that same campground, uh, this would be the the uh, well, there's two that they're scheduling. One is is in a campground by Ojai. Oh, and another one is at a Live Oak campground, which is the one where we would do that kaleidoscope with 2000 Girl Scouts. But there's a Girl Scout club that got formed through us, isn't there? Yes. That's and they're also definitely... building an observatory at their Ojai site. Oh. Well, let me tell you right now, tune us in again, everybody. Are we down to the wire? Got about a minute. And Jerry, did you want to did you want to hit any more subjects on your email? Like the the no, I think, I, I think uh, there's no obligation to cover every topic. It's just a suggestion. It can hold over. We're doing it every week now, 11 a.m. I can take out parts we didn't cover and put them in next time. Well, what, what's cool now is is Vesta's at opposition. So, you know, it's it's visible in binoculars. And if you're lucky, you could catch it naked eye. Uh -huh. so it's a fun one to visit. That's that's an asteroid. Yes. You can see an asteroid with a pair of binoculars? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. It just looks <laughs> like a dot. I'm going to invest in one, doggone it. Well, thank you, Tom, nice. for incredible graphics. Thank you, Mr. President, Jerry Wilson. Can't wait for us to meet again. Outreach coordinator, uh, Chuck McPartland. Give my love to your wives, and we'll do this Hello, all baby. again next week. I'm going to close out by saying what Casey Kasem used to say after the top 10. Keep reaching for the stars, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Bye. Bye. Thanks, Thank Tom, you. for emceeing. Right. Ending Bye. the meeting. <laughs>